Good morning and welcome to our online worship from Craig Methodist Church this fourth Sunday in Advent. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, star and angels, heaven touching earth and the divine entering human flesh, be the peace among us and the hope within us that we might become your holy people in this and every place where you might take us. Amen. Let us again unite our hearts in prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, the eternal mystery of the divine, about to touch this earth in vulnerability and love, through the humble witness and patient obedience of your servants Mary and Joseph, what glorious news to share. Emmanuel, God with us, as we gather together in worship, preparing to celebrate the Saviour's birth and once again to journey spiritually to a stable with our grateful offerings and praise. What glorious news to share. Amen. A prayer of confession. God of wholeness, healing and power, forgive our reluctance to open our hearts in prayer. In the presence of Jesus, the blind received their sight. Helpers, lepers were healed, 
The lame threw down their crutches and leapt for joy. Good news was preached to all who would hear. We come to you, afraid to ask too much, doubting your love and power. Grant us courage in our prayers and the knowledge that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible for you. Amen. And a prayer of thanksgiving. This Advent time we remember Mary and Joseph giving thanks for their faithfulness, courage and obedience, stepping out into the unknown in the strength of your spirit, playing their part in the fulfilment of your plan to bring a prodigal people home again. May their example be the pattern of our lives. And when we hear your gentle whisper, grant us courage to step out on our journey with you. We pray these prayers through the name of Jesus. Amen. Our reading from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 10. Let's listen to God's word. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Amen. And we thank God for this reading from his holy word. Our reading from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 10. Let's listen to God's word. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Amen. 
and we thank God for this reading from his holy word. Good morning. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person this morning, but uh, you may already know that I am in a period of self-isolation following my daughter's diagnosis with COVID-19. However, I am delighted this morning that through the medium of technology that I can share briefly with you this morning. What I'd like us to think about is the passage we just heard read from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 10. It's about the tree, the image of the tree. The image of a tree is an ambiguous biblical symbol. A tree can signify strength and power and beauty, long life, great blessing. But also the tree can be a symbol of pride, of arrogance and surprisingly vulnerability. Because a mighty tree can be cut down by someone with an axe. Something that was once great and majestic has been reduced to perhaps a pathetic, ugly stump. The tree metaphor has been carried over from the previous chapter where Isaiah says, Look, the sovereign, the Lord of hosts will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The tallest trees will be cut down and the lofty will be brought low. But then at the start of chapter 11, he refers to what remains of the Davidic monastery as the stump of Jesse and goes on to contrast this with the ideal characteristics of a leader of God's people. With such a leader, the people could at last know peace and security. Isaiah looked back to the vision that inspired the choice of David, the youngest child of an ordinary family, as the future king. Isaiah even managed to see hope for the future in the midst of decline of Judah. The things that were fast disappearing were not the truly important things. Perhaps the image that speaks most to me is with the line where he says, a child shall lead them. The picture we are given in Isaiah 11 and verse 6 isn't merely one in which dangerous predatory animals and people and situations become benign, but rather it shows the weaker, more vulnerable creature in control. The wolf will live with the lamb. A better translation of the Hebrew word gar is the word in English sojourn, implying that it will be the lamb's guest. The leopard approaches the kid and lies down. An oversight of all this is given to the very last person you would expect, a child. This is also part of the image of the great reversal we find described in the Magnificat in Luke chapter 1. The kind of reversal that oppressed, powerless, destitute, terrorised people all over the world long to see. Luke chapter 1 verses 51 to 54 has these words for us. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. Part of Advent is a time of preparation and waiting for Christ's coming again. And when we recognise that Jesus as the person fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah, we are acknowledging him as the leader who will bring about this great reversal. Prophets always look to the past to help them create a vision for the future. In this passage, Isaiah sees that the leaders have become arrogant and there has been a necessary chopping down. The descendants of David have forgotten their roots. They have forgotten that when God chose, he chose David, the youngest and the most insignificant. The leaders have become proud and distanced from the ordinary people. In particular, they have ignored the needs of the poor and the vulnerable. Their nation needs a new leader, one who will have real wisdom and righteousness. The reign of such a leader will turn things on their head and create a sort of new harmony. This will be less about power and strength and more to do with justice. Isaiah's image for this could not be stronger. A child 
in the company of dangerous animals, but who is perfectly safe. Perhaps the image of a child when he saw it, he saw in the child the openness, innocence and fairness that had been lost amongst the people. To emphasise his vision, he draws contrast, as we said, between wild and dangerous beasts and domestic animals. This is creating a vision of peace and gentleness that contrasts starkly with what we would call today the law of the jungle or dog eat dog. We still have a deep and overwhelming longing for Isaiah's vision of shalom, of peace for our troubled world. So here we see this image of a new shoot from a stump. If you've ever seen a crack in concrete, you will see green shoots appearing up through it. And you see the idea of this shoot from a stump creates the image ripe with possibilities. Was Isaiah cynical of the ruling authority? His prophecies began at a time of corrupted leadership and a yearning for wise and righteous leaders. Isaiah's heart aches for a leader as described by the prophets from Amos and Ezekiel. The image of the tree tomb suggests death, while a spouting green shoot underscores new and hopeful beginnings. At the heart of all this is a new a basic concern for justice, a new way of doing things. Justice for the poor, justice for the needy, justice for the vulnerable and the oppressed. Faith in God is to be at the heart of this king's action. Like an artist, Isaiah is painting a vision of a new landscape with vibrant, passionate and generous daring brushstrokes. Imagining peace and wholeness and a safe place to be vulnerable, to reach out, to stretch out and to grow. The image that Isaiah paints is an image that we crave for every day. An image of righteousness and faithfulness to God, of this overpowering destructiveness and the ascendancy of Christ's kingdom. As we wait in Advent, a time of preparation we wait expectantly for we know that when Christ returns all things will be made new there will be a new heaven and a new earth part of the shoots of Jesse we have in our image the advent God of life the God of life who comes to us as a vulnerable child offers the possibility of life even when the evidence around us suggests otherwise our Advent God invites us to lift our fixed fears from the stump of our troubles, from the despairs, from the things that concern us, but gently urging us to look at those green shoots sprouting, those roots that will grow into a new way, the fruit of the roots of a felled tree and the possibility of a return to a place where peace and justice reign in a holy embrace. I wish you all, if I don't see you, between now and Christmas and the New Year, a blessed Christmas and a peaceful New Year. God bless. Stay safe and stay well. Amen. Our prayers of intercession for this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let us again unite our hearts in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, at this time, supposedly of goodwill among all, we pray for peace in our world, an end to division and discord, hatred and hostility, death and destruction. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we speak of peace, but our in our hearts we do not believe it possible. When we look at our world we see little hope of an end to its troubles. We are sceptical, uncertain, filled with doubt, cautious about expressing any optimism. Even where there are signs of hope, moves towards reconciliation, we know it would all take a lot of time before we dare to believe it is really possible. 
But we pray in this Advent season, renew our ability to look forward, rekindle our belief in the future and restore our capacity to hope for better things. Prince of Peace, hear our prayers. Help us as we remember your coming, as we serve you now, as we look towards your coming again to anticipate your kingdom through the service we offer and the lives we live. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, teach us to work for that day when your throne shall be established, your justice will prevail and the earth will be filled with the knowledge of you as the waters cover the sea. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer for your name's sake. Amen. And we pray together the word of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us, us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sending out prayer. God of surprises, you chose Mary as the ark of your covenant with us, and with her, yes, you entered the world of body and blood. Nurtured by your body and blood, we go out to look for surprise and wonder 
all around us. Amen. And we share in the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.